Hello, hello. Welcome to Markham Family Gaming. Welcome to the board games. Today we're bringing you gameplay of Uprising Curse of the Last Emperor. So this isn't technically a family game, but I love this game. I just got it right before Christmas. I've played it six times already, and today is the 31st. Um, so I wanted to get a video up of a solo gameplay um, and see how it goes. So let's see. All right, so in this game, you are playing factions that are uprising against the, the emperor who is trying to make his last stand and not let the rebellion succeed. Um, you've also got chaos coming in from the outside in. So you've got the empire center out, and then you've got the, up, uh, the chaos horde coming in. Now they are both controlled by the game, but they are not friends, they are enemies also. So you've got, I'll be managing two factions, um, and then we'll have the Empire, and then the Horde, the Chaos Horde, on the board as well. Throughout the course of the game, you've got action selection. You're gonna be building up your army, going out exploring, building new havens, producing, questing, purchasing items in the market, um, trying to build up your characters so that you can fend off the chaos horde as it comes in and survive against the empire as it comes out to you. All right, um, it's a dice rolling game for all the questing and the attacking. So there is some randomness involved. You can think you're totally prepared for a fight and you limp away um, to, with your tail between your legs. Um, you go into a quest thinking you got plenty of dice to get the successes that you need and it just doesn't happen. So it's a game of highs, a game of lows, which is what you want in a game like this. Um, I highly recommend it to anyone and uh, let's just give it a go, see how it is. All right, so first off, we start by reading an event. The first player draws an event card and reads it. Every player gains two food. Wow, we're actually starting with something good. That's a plus. And then uh, we place a horde which are the Chaos's um, big guys, out at threat level four in the Fog Cave, and Fog Grave, sorry, and also a, another horde at threat level four in the Screaming Sea. And the map is divided into the Screaming Sea, the Howling White, and the Fog Grave. Um, so let's see what hordes we get. We got the Blood Worm. So we'll put him at threat level four. When he comes out, we immediately place a curse on any hex with no X. That is not good because a cursed land cannot be explored, cannot be built on. Um, if you're fighting on a cursed hex, only the horde gets to use lightning bolts, not anyone else. Um, so we'll look for the blood worm in just a minute. There he is. And it said to place him in the fog grave. So that's gonna be down here by me. I'm gonna put him out here. Um, and then we're gonna put a curse on any unmarked any unexplored hex that doesn't have an X on it. So we'll put it there. All right, and the second horde that's going to come out is the Counter of Omens. Counter of Omens, where are you? There he is. All right, and he gets two skeletons on his hex. Now he comes out at threat level four as well. He is going into the Screaming Sea so it kind of spreads out the horde here and there. Screaming C, we'll put him up there. Gets two skeletons with him on his hex. If ever there are three skeletons on a hex, it becomes a horde. So it escalates. Goody, goody. All right, so not adjacent to any haven was for the placement as well for those uh, horde. Now we move on to giving them activation tokens. They will activate after players finish taking their turns according to the number of activation tokens they have on them. Um, next, we're gonna go down to the build phase where we are going to draw two feats. I failed to pull out the two start cards. You start with two abilities, then we shuffle our deck and we'll draw two. Pick one, put the other on the bottom. Let's see what we got. Ooh, I like that one. Uh, I like both of these, but I like this one more. Um, it says, 
younglings. After combat, flip this to exchange one youngling here with an oath sworn. So it's kind of like they veteran up and you get a higher level troop. Let me get out this guy's start cards. One, two. Um, he has archery. If you have two vargs here, gain an orange die. After combat, if you have one plus units here, gain two resources. Your hero has to be in that hex. We're going to look at these. Uh, clash. If the troll, troll was destroyed here, roll a black die. Dis uh, oh, de death Sworn. Discard this card to remove any of your units and one hex from the game. Destroy one skeleton or one garrison for each of your removed units in an adjacent hex. Wow. That could be powerful. I guess we'll go up to having the troll ability where he gets to roll. If the troll dies, he kind of goes out with a big bang and, and gets to roll the black die one more time. The black die has a lot of skulls on it, so it gets a lot of hits. Um, so we drew our feats. Now it's time to build. Um, in the build phase, you can put walls and towers on your havens, and then you build as many units as you can according to your resources. Every um, faction is a little different with their units and the dice they get to roll. Um, it's suggested that you build a lot of little units to be able to go out and do some stuff in the early stages of the game. Um, so with uh, this faction, I am going uh, the Duarcar is the blue faction and the Crow are the red fra faction. I'm going to build two, I want to leave some plunder behind so I can build a haven too in the first round. So I want to make sure I leave two plunder behind, I want to make sure I leave some food behind so I can take the command action. So with that being said, um, I'm going to pay four salt to build two archers. No, I'm going to build two younglings. And then I'm going to pay, you know what? I'm gonna pay four plunder and I'm gonna go out and explore plunder to get plunder so I can have two archers with those two young ones. So that's what the, the doer car are gonna do. Um, next, the crow, um, you can only have five units in a hex as well. Uh, your heroes do not count against that limit. And when heroes go out and explore, they do not trigger combat, they're kind of just going in and out and doing their thing. Um, I kind of want to have a couple of archers because I feel like it's nice because they get to go in both rounds of uh, archery and clash of combat. Um, and then I'm going to spend three food to build three tribesmen. So that gets me up to five there. I could have spent a little more and maybe put a Varg out. But no, I think I'm just gonna go with the little guys for the first round of the game. All right, so um, there's no immediate threats coming towards our havens as of yet, so I don't think it's necessary to build any walls or towers. Could be wrong. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on to the actions phase where we take turns taking one action at a time until each faction is out of actions. So I think pretty typical in the game, move and explore. It's kind of the first thing you want to do. So we're going to come over to this hex here. It is Dunkelholm. Gain two plunder, which is what we need to build that haven. Remove any skeletons here. There weren't any. Place two garrisons here, so it gets a level two garrison. Each player draws a feat, then discards a feat. Interesting. Oh, um, another thing to note, on these hexes, there is impassable terrain. You can orient the hex any way you want to. What happens is your units can't cross impassable terrain, but Legion and Horde cannot pass impassable terrain either. So it could be a strategic advantage. Um, I want to be able to get to that C tower though. Let me see if I do it like that. Gives it a little bit of protection. And I'm going to be facing a level two garrison when I come in to try to clear it out and build a haven. So we need to draw a feet card and then discard another feet card. I like this card. I'm going to put this start card at the bottom. Discarding a feet, you put it on the bottom of your feet tech. Um, 
Crow is going to draw this card. This card, the, the one that I kept was ignore a skull or a shield on one of your enemy's dice during the archery round. Um, this is the Grave Digger. Discard this to gain one item from the market discard, even if you could not use it. So that's very powerful. Each of your heroes has certain attributes at the bottom. Those come into play in the game a few times. One is when you're questing. Those are the dice that you roll. Two is when you go to the market to purchase items. In the market, there is sometimes a hero attribute, and your hero must have that attribute to gain it. Unless a card says that you don't have to, then you can gain it and use it because you've gained it. The, the restriction is only when gaining the item from the market. Um, so I, I think I'm going to keep that and put that uh, troll card on the bottom because I just don't see myself building the troll that soon. I might regret that option, that decision as well. All right, so on to the crow. The crow are going to move and explore as well. We're going to move uh, this. Maybe we're going to move this way instead. Uh, Fearnhala, gain two food. If empty, place two garrisons here. So the empire is quickly building. Place one activation token on a legion or horde card with the fewest tokens. Um, so the way that we've been playing that, and there's no impassable terrain on this, so it doesn't matter how I orient it, is you, um, We've been placing it on the lowest activation because that gives them the best benefit. I might be playing that wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, or if I get to choose and I can put it on whichever. Um, so that's his action. Then it's back to me. I'm gonna go ahead and try to take out this garrison. Um, so I have to pay an action point and a food to do the command action. When you command, you can bring in any adjacent, from any adjacent hex, troops into that hex. So you choose the hex and bring them into it. Um, again, five is the limit. I've only got four and the hero doesn't count. So now we're gonna have combat because we have two different factions in the same hex. In the archery round, the garrison rolls two white. We are in the forest, so you always check the terrain when you begin a battle. In the forest, you can reroll up to two dice. So he's gonna roll two white, I'm gonna roll two white. So. We'll set these up here. I'll roll with my left hand for me and my right hand for the garrison. So I got a hit and a shield and he got a hit and a shield. Um, so I'm going to use my ability to ignore his shield so that my hit gets through and I block his hit coming back. Whenever you destroy a part of a garrison or a zombie horde, you gain a victory point. Um, and now we move on to the clash phase. In clash, I'm rolling two white and two blue. And a level one garrison rolls one white and one blue. So I got good odds here. Let's see if we can make it happen. All right, I got two hits, two shields, and he got a hit and a shield. So I block his hit. He blocks one of my hits, but the second hit goes through. That is garrison out. Get another victory point. And now I've freed up that hex to be able to build on. Um, all right, let's go back to the crow. I think the crow are going to do the same thing. So they're going to pay an action point on command, spend a food, and they're going to send their guys into that garrison. Now, he has an archery ability, but it's only if you have two vargs there. Oh, I forgot. After combat, if a youngling survives combat, he can become an oath sworn. So I get to upgrade that guy. Always make sure you look at your feats and do all your abilities. Um, but I don't have any Vargs here, so we're just going in. Two white, two white. Seeing what we get here. All right, so he got a two, one hit and two shields, and I got a shield. So I block the hit. We move on to uh, the Clash round. In Clash, a level two gar garrison gets blue, two orange, and a white. And I have three orange and two white. This might get a little bloody. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot bloody. So I got two shields. Um, so that will take, he got four hits. So I'm losing two people. 
So I'll lose an orange and a white. Or I should use two orange, because they're only one food to build. Now, enemies that are destroyed go to their graveyard, because that's how they're going to um, score at the end of the round. I, on the other hand, got four hits. He got no shield, so I clearly destroy the garrison. So that'll get red two victory points. And then he also has an after combat ability. If you have one plus units here, gain two resources. Hmm, I think I'm gonna go for salt. One, two. All right. So his was a little bloodier than mine, but hey, that's what happens. Um, next, what should I do? I haven't looked at the quest really yet. Strike at dawn. You have to get two successes. You may draw a new quest. One Legion or Horde loses two threat. Ooh, that could be very powerful. And Yanni, the hunter, is pretty good at questing because she always gets an extra die outside of combat rolls. Um, we've got a bow of Kaborn up there that you can pay a food to get an orange and archery. You have to have two guile to be able to use that. Unfortunately, neither of my guys have two um, guile. Then there's a discard every player may build units and defenses on their havens. That's nice, it's free. And then the healing potion, discard this. One of your units destroyed here goes onto any one of your havens. And that's one salt, no hero requirements. And our other quest are forest spirit, choose a hex with curse, pay five resources to remove it. Curses are so tough in this game because at the end of the round when the horde scores, they get one point for every curse and it is very difficult to remove curses. Um, and my play is, I think the only way I've seen them is through that card and a, maybe one or two other quests. So it's expensive, pay five uh, resources, but getting rid of a curse is getting rid of one point for every round in the game. Uh, lastly, oh, I got, there's both curses out, or both quests out here that remove. Uh, choose a hex with a curse, remove that curse, discard this quest. Oh, well, we definitely want to get rid of this curse. So I think I'm going to quest with Yanni. And Yanni gets one of each die. So she gets a purple, a red, a blue, and a white or an orange. Uh, I'm going to go with orange for the skulls. And then I get to add a die so I can add the black die. Um, because her ability is, she's an elder, she always adds a die to her rolls. So we are looking for uh, two successes. I need three skulls, shield, bolt are the three areas. All right, we got the shield, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six skulls. So we got the shield and the skull, so I get the victory point, which is the bonus underneath the shield. So I go up one. And then I can remove a curse. We'll remove this one off of that um, unexplored hex. Unfortunately, I didn't get the bolt, so I can't keep that quest card out. It does go away. It says there's an option of removing it or a druid card, which reminds me I forgot to flip the druid card. Um, it's uh, the Mountain Heart. These are kind of godlike powers that are available to all players. If in combat you roll a bolt, um, you get to do. You can choose to do one of these abilities, or a bolt can cancel a shield. Um, archery and clash. Ignore all skulls showing on one die your enemy rolled. Ooh, that could be really good. Um, all right. So that was a successful quest. Um, got a victory point. Got to remove a curse. Let's see what the crow wants to do here. Um, I think we're going to build that haven that we just cleared out for. It cost him three plunder to build the haven. But that's going to help him produce a lot more. He'll produce more off of his player board and more because he's also controlling that hex. And I totally... No, it wasn't the forest. It was the marsh. Um, so we... It wouldn't have mattered because marsh is an archery. Red dice become white dice because it's harder to shoot archery in a marsh. So we're okay. We made a mistake there, but it didn't affect the outcome of the battle because we both rolled white dice in archery anyway. All right. Back to the Duokar. Mm, so I can build that haven. The blood worm's gonna come towards me. <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna reorient this tile so that the blood worm can't get to me. Now that means I'm not gonna get to that sea haven either. 
but I feel like I gotta protect my Haven. Don't wanna lose those, so I'm gonna pretend like we went back and did that. Um, again, not changing the game any now, that would be for future rounds when the Bloodworm comes in. Um, so, uh, Durakar, he is building a Haven. Uh, cost two plunder. Building that second Haven right here. Back to the crow. Does the crow want to? He can, he has three might, and he's got a lot of resources, so he could do that other remove a curse. Um, one thing to note: skeletons also will activate, so we're going to want to get back to our havens um, with our troops before the end of the round um, to protect our our home base haven. Um, or. Well, I don't have a lot to build with. Actually, really can't build anything with the Dewar car. I was thinking about getting that action that item up there that lets you build during the round. Um, so, what are you gonna do? Call the destroyer. Let's go. Um, I think we want to get that card to use at some point during the game anyway, the survivor that lets you build. So he's gonna take the market action and take that survivor card. You are limited to having 10 cards in front of you. If you have 10 and you got another one, you'd have to discard one to keep the 10th card. Um, so great. That again was discard this card. Every player may build units and defenses on their havens. Um, all right. So with my next action, let's go. Um, I can command, or no, yeah, I could, well, it's got to be an explored hex, an explored hex to command, so I have to move, and explore, I'm just going to go ahead and see what's coming here at this place, so it has a garrison, Let's see what the hex says, gain two food, If empty, place a garrison here. If not, reinforce. Reinforce just means build the next level. If it had a skeleton, it'd gain a skeleton. If it has a garrison, get the next level on the garrison. And place one garrison on any empty hex with no X. Now we do have, again, some orientation to think about. I'm going to make it impassable from the capital down. So he's going to have to move around a little bit. Um... Garrison on any empty hex with no X. Um, I only have one more action left with blue, so I can put it here, and we'll go ahead and have him take care of that. So we're going to move, explore this new hex that we got here. Black Ice, gain three salt. If empty, place a skeleton here. If not, reinforce. So again, it gets uh, another tier to its garrison. Place one skeleton with other skeletons. So we don't want to make a grouping of three. So let's put it down here. Um, place one activation token on a legion or horde. With let's look at this. Place one activation token on a legion or a horde. We did that. Now both the blood worm and the counter of omens are activating twice. Um, there's no orientation that goes with that. And then, where did the garrison go? There it is. So that garrison goes there. All right. So with my last action, I need to command and bring my troops home because we got to be ready for that. Now I've got two zombies coming my way. Uh, eat, same thing for uh, the crow. I'm going to command. I really would have liked to do that quest, done that quest, but maybe I shouldn't explore there one last time. Um, and so he can come from there back down as well. So everybody's there. So I can ignore and the archer around, but zombies don't have archer. Anyway, so we're actioned out. So now we go down to the nemesis phase. You activate the Legion or Hordes in uh, initiative order. So first will be the Counter of Omens up there. 
And what the horde does is it moves in towards the capital. It has a preference of going, going to havens than to enemies. So it's going to be moving in. Um, there are no havens here. It is currently three way, so it's just going to move straight in. And then those zombies are going to come, come with it. Um, that's one activation for the counter of omens. Now, secondly, without moving further away from the capital, it's going to move one in. There's no haven, but there is an enemy now. So the counter of omens is going to move in here, and that's going to trigger a battle with the garrison. Um, so the counter of omens gets to roll three white dice in archery. The garrison has one. So garrison on the left. Counter got three hits. Uh, garrison got one hit. So the counter goes down one. That garrison is destroyed. It goes into Chaos's graveyard because they will score points for uh, Imperial troops in their graveyard. So that was the counters to activations. Now the Blood Worm, again, it's going to move to one of these three spaces. So it's one, two, three. Moving here would be one, two, three. So I actually needed to place this like that. Because my intent was to protect from the blood worm. So the blood worm would move here to get closer to my haven, and then it would move here to get closer to the tower and then also be coming in towards my haven. So the blood worm didn't get to uh, do anything. Now these zombies are gonna come in from up here. Um, the crow have two white and archery, so hopefully we can get this ping right here. Yes, we did, we got a hit and a shield. Red gets a point um, for destroying the zombie. Um, these two zombies are gonna come up. I have two archers, so hopefully we can do some damage here. We got one of them. So I get a victory point for getting rid of that. Um, now we go into Clash. I have two whites, a blue and a red, and he has, uh, skeletons always roll red. So let's see what we get. And we got it. So um, he got a hit, but I got a hit and a shield. So that's going to destroy that zombie, get another point. Um, I will trigger my, oh, going back to the crow. After combat, if one plus units here gain two resources, um, I think we're gonna go for food. One, two. Then my after a combat ability is if a youngling survives, he becomes an oath sworn. So that was nice. I got to upgrade two troops um, that round. All right. So that's combat from the nemesis. Then we go to the production phase. You produce what your haven is on your board. So I've got one salt here. One salt here is two. So I get two salt. Plunder, I get four off my board. Uh, one there is five plus two is seven. So three, six, seven. And then food, I get one two, and that's it, two food. The crow are going to get um, one salt there, one salt up there is two. And then for plunder, they get one off their havens, uh, one off that up there, so they get two. And then food, they get two food there, one food there is three plus four, so they get seven food. So they were heavy on the food, I was heavy on the plunder. Um, so we've gained resources based on our havens, based on our hexes, now we go to the scoring round. The Empire scores one point for each garrison on the board, so they go up to four. Um, the Horde scores one point for each curse on the board, which is two, plus one point for each Horde on the board, which is two. And then I forgot to do graveyards. The Empire gets two for the red in their graveyard, and the Horde is going to get two for the Empire in their graveyard. So they're both gonna to go to six. Then we score, we get two points for each Haven. Each of us have two Havens, so we're each gonna go up four. So go to nine, go to seven. 
Um, we score each point for special uh, hexes. Our, both of our homelands give us a point, so we each get one more. So at the end of chapter one, we've managed to outpace the Horde and the Empire. Um, let's keep going and see what happens. Uh, next, we go back to the top and we reveal a new Druid card. Tremometer, Archery and Clash. Place your cheapest unit from the reserve here after damage once per round. Wow, so you get to bring Tree Mother, not Tremometer. <laughs> Tree Mother, so it's bringing out units. Um, flip all your face down cards. Some cards you have to flip over to do. Um, we didn't have to do that in round one. Regain all your action points. So we'll bring those eight out there. These eight over here. Uh, deal three new items. So items go to the graveyard uh, or the discard pile. And we bring out three new ones. The Sensor of Shadows, you have to have two leadership to use it. Ice Water, you have to have one leadership to use. And Petiti, your hero up to three hexes. Move your hero around. One salt, anyone can use it. Quest cards go away. New ones come out. You have to keep an eye on these though, because sometimes they can have uh, negative effects when they come out. None of those dead. And then, we did the quest, passed the first player, so now Call the Destroyer is gonna be our first player. We add two threat levels to everyone in play. So the Worm is going up to six. The Counter of Omens took a hit. He's going up to five, because that garrison got one, one hit on him. Then we read the next event. Dun, 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 dun. For each player, place one garrison on the capital. Oh. Normally, when you place a garrison onto the board and you can't place a garrison onto a level three because it's already the highest, the empire gains a victory point. But the capital is special where it says, if you would place a fourth garrison here, place it on any empty hex with no X. If none, reinforce another garrison. We'll put it there. We'll put one here, because those will be the two. Now we place two legions at threat level five. The Imperial Guard. Oh, that just so happened to be on top, luckily. So he comes out in the capital um, at threat level five. And it says, place its target. Now, when you place a target, it goes to the player, either player, and then it goes on their haven with the least number of units. So um, I'll take the uh, Imperial Guard. So here's its target. I'll put it there on that haven with no units. Place one garrison on every hex with a garrison except the capital. Oh my goodness. So that becomes... Threat level three, or garrison level three. This becomes a level three. And then the other two, or three, are gonna become level twos. Ouch, that just escalated pretty quickly. All right, that's one. Now our second legion is the executioner. Oh gosh. The Executioner is brutal. Rolls like a black die with each hex, and that black die has up to three hits on one side of its face. So the Executioner, now once one faction is targeted, it has to go to the other faction. So again, it goes to its least, four, least number of units haven, so it's gonna go to that one. And this is also at threat level five. So, as you can see, even though we outpaced them in round in chapter one, um, things just es escalated fairly quickly. We're not done reading the event card yet. If there is no horde in play, place one horde at threat level five. Well, we got two hordes, so we're good there. And place one activation token on one horde card. So again, the counter of omens is gonna get that. Um, then we go down to the next stage in events is give each Legion or Horde, an activation token. 
So the Counter of Omens is going to be able to activate twice. All right, now we are in the build phase. So we're going to draw two new feats. One, Astute. If you solve a quest, gain the reward of one quest goal, even if you gained it already. Or, Archery and Clash Glory. Flip this to lose one shield and gain a bolt. That could be very powerful because then that bolt triggers either canceling a shield on their side or using a druid ability. Uh... I think I'm going to keep that Archery and Clash ability. Next. Call the Destroyer. All right. He got both of his hero upgrade cards. So you choose one side, upgrade your ability, and it gives you three resources when you collect it. So he doesn't have any magic. And sometimes these require bolts. And that purple die gives you that chance to get bolts. So I'm going to get a magic. Put the other card on the bottom. And then I get three resources. What do you need? Um, he's got plenty of salt and a lot of food. I think the troll's coming out this round, and I regret getting rid of that troll card now. Um, so let's go for... So that's going to be five. Um, I think I'm going for salt. Okay. All right. So we did the feats. Now we're building units. All right. Stuff is starting to get real. This guy is going to get attacked, so I'm going to go ahead and wall and tower it up for uh, one plunder each. Um, wall gives you a blue die in Clash. Uh, tower gives you a white die in Archery. I need to remember that is in the forest so I can reroll two dice if needed. Um, then um, I'm going to... I don't think I need to build anything on my main haven. Up there, that counter of omens is going to activate twice. So he will move one, one, because he never wants to move further away. So he's going to gear, he's going to go after the empire, which is perfect. Um, so I don't need to really worry about fortifying my base. I don't think. So let's look at units and you can build units wherever, um, you have havens. So, I got a lot of stuff here. I want to bring the troll out. The troll is five food, two salt, and there's my troll. Let's go get some bargs. Three salt, three salt, and four food. So it takes three salt and two food. So th um, six salt and four food get me both bargs. And that's gonna trigger my ability um, that lets me get an orange die um, before rolling an archery. Um, so we want that. And then let's go. Oh, I really hope that that thing has uh, impassable terrain on it. That could be very helpful. Because right now the Counter of Omens is set to wreak havoc like that, and that's what I want him to do. All right, so we got food, but we're gonna need to do a lot of commanding. Um, let's go two salt. We'll put an archer out here. So, that was uh, the crows building. Now let's see what my guy here wants to do. Um, I can't bring out the elephant. Well, I can always trade three resources for any one, three of any one for one of another. You can also do the trade action to gain assault, so I might do that, because the trade action can be used always. It doesn't have to just be done during the actions phase. Um, I feel like I want to bring out this archer. And then I want to bring out a youngling. 
I'm going to leave myself with two plunder so I have an option of building a, a haven. And I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend an action point, which is going to bring me down one. But I'll get that salt, four salt, and three plunder to bring out Koloth, my big elephant. Since that blood worm's coming my way, I need to be ready. Um, all right. So. I think that's all I'm building there. And we built, 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 taking actions. Let's go. So if I take out this garrison, the counter is going to activate twice, but it's just going to wreak havoc in the middle there. Now the Imperial Guard will get to move out because his initiative is 12, um, which I'm fine with. And then the Executioner and the Garrison and the Counter of Omens are just going to go to town on each other. So yeah, let's do that. So he's going to command. And we've got two Vargs, a Troll, and I'll bring in Archers like that. So we'll have two White, two Red in Clash, and it gives you the Orange in Archery, and then the tr Troll in Clash against the Garrison. So the Garrison's rolling three, and I'm rolling two Whites and an Orange. Because I get that die with the two vards. Alright, he blanked out. I got one hit, so that takes out one level. And that gives red a point. Now we're going on in the clash, so I need to add the two reds and the black. He is level two, so he gets a white, two orange, and blue. Alright. Should get it, but I might take some damage along the way. Oh, he only rolled a shield. And I got one, two, three, four, five hits. So he's gone. Two points for red. What a roll. No, all those guys are there. Um... He gets two resources. He'll take some salt. Because of his ability of after combat pillaging. Now it's on to blue. I cannot do the same thing because I've got impassable terrain. Huh. Well, we'll go ex move and explore over here. Move and explore. If empty, place a skeleton here. If not, reinforce. So it's going to become level three. Uh, it's the Torel Caravan Passage. I don't even get anything. Oh, because you roll. <laughs> Uh, if empty, if not reinforced, which we did, roll your hero dice. So I get one, two, three, four. It's an outside of combat, so I can add a black die. We're looking for skulls. So I get red, purple, blue, and we want skulls, so we'll roll orange for guile. Guile, you choose white or orange. So we're looking for skulls. Got one, two, three, four, five skulls, so I get five salt. Awesome. Every other player gets two salt. So we kind of did some trading with the caravan there. Pretty good outcome. Um, I am going to move. So he's here and the garrison's there. Ah. Ah. <laughs> hey. So cool how the garrison's built together. But I just dropped it a couple times. I'm gonna move uh, Call up here and explore there. Uh, Imperial Slave Mines. Like that, I 
I guess. Remove any skeletons here, place two garrisons here. Uh-oh, they're gonna get a victory point because it can only take one more. So Empire scores a point. Um, roll your hero dice, gain one plunder for every skull. So he rolls three red, a purple, and an orange. We'll choose for Guile. So we're looking for skulls and we're getting plunder. I got one, two, three, four, five. So he's getting five plunder. And every other player gains one. Not mad at you. And he's there. Okay. Um, all right. So back to the duo car. Um, I think I want to go try to take on that Haven. Or that garrison, sorry, rather. Um, the question is, do I want to bring something here first and then go? Uh, let's go for it. <laughs> Commanding. Pay on a food. I'm rolling two white, he's rolling three white. I got two hits, he got a shield. So, one hit goes through, one point for blue. Then we go on to uh, Clash. And he gets blue, orange, orange, white. I have two white and two red. Um, and that's it. Oh, wow. So I got one, two, three, four hits and a bolt. Place your cheapest unit in from the reserve here. So I can place a unit in, which is good because then that youngling will survive. Um, and then I got, he got two hits. So my shield absorbs one, one of my archers dies. Oh, these should have come out of the graveyard at the end of the last round. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, and then my four hits come through and wipe it out. So I get two points for destroying a level two garrison. Um, flip this to exchange one youngling here with an oath sworn. I think I messed up on that in the first round, so I technically should should not have gotten two. So that really changes the whole game. But hey, mistakes are made, mistakes happen. But I won't upgrade this one. I'll just pretend like it upgraded the other one that was a youngling there. All right, so all these guys are here. Um, trying to mitigate the mistake that I made. I know it was a mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, anywho, back to these guys. So, Call of the Destroyer is feeling pretty confident. He's going to go after that garrison again. So, I've got two white die. I do get to roll an orange because I have two bards in archery. So that's my archery. Um, garrison gets three because it's a level three. He blanked out. I blanked out. Nothing happens in archery. Now we go on to um, Clash. Two white, two red, and a black. And he gets two blue, two orange, and a white. Come on, skulls. All right. So he got three skulls and a shield. I got two skulls and a lightning bolt. Now I can't bring anybody in, but I can use it to ignore one of his shields or his skulls because of this ability here. Arch, um, ignore all skulls showing on one and die your enemy roll. So that'll become a blank. 
So now he's got two hits, I've got two hits, but he had one shield, so he only loses one, and I lose two. So red's gonna move up one. I'm gonna lose my two archers to the Empire. Um, so the archer dice are out. I've still got my reds and my black. Um, he is now at level two, so he's down a blue die. Yep. All right, he only got one hit. I got one, two, three hits, so he's out. Um, I'll use, I got two bolts too, so I'll use that ability to ignore his skull off of that die. So the hit doesn't come through for him. Two hits, two points. That's gone. Those guys come up here. We get to pillage again. When pillaging, um, I get two resources. I think I'm gonna go for salt. Um, right. Uh, okay. Let's see. Back to Yanni. Yanni. Yanni's gonna build a haven. Haven, two plunder. Drop a haven in there. Um, back to call. Now looking ahead, I need to get out of here because I want the counter of omens to, well, at this point right now, he has to move in there because there's nothing here. So I don't have to move from there. Yeah, that's right. So I could build, I'm gonna Haven. Oh, I commanded again there. I think I moved and explored too. I, I think I've been forgetting to mark my actions. Sorry. Havening takes three plunder for the crow. Uh, building a haven here. Uh, just realized that I forgot to do terrain again. And I'm very sorry about that. That's probably the mistake that I make the most. I try to remember it, but I forget it so often. Um, market? Quest? Gain one resource. Ooh. Flip any unexplored hex with no curse on it and resolve its effects, but do not place or reinforce any garrisons or skeletons. Do not place or reinforce any garrisons. Ooh. That could be cool. Yeah, we're going for that one. The Hokan Scouts. All right, so I get to roll one of each. Blue, purple, red, or orange. I'm gonna add a die, we'll add black, and I'm questing. We're looking for one success. And I got it on the shield. Lucky. I only got two skulls, one shield, um, a bolt, and a blank. So the one shield is one success, so that's enough to solve it. Um, I will reveal this hex. Oh, I was hoping for impassable terrain. But there's nothing on there. Gain three salt. Uh, place one skeleton, but we're ignoring that. Reinforce, we're ignoring that. Uh... Do not place or reinforce any garrisons or, or skeletons. It says do not place. So I'm not placing any skeletons anywhere. All right. Um, since I got the shield, I can draw a new quest. Normally, you don't refresh the quest until the end. Oh, and it's a bad thing. That can happen. Uh, for every player, place one garrison on a hex with a garrison. Place one activation token on the legion deck. So the next legion that will come out will come out with an extra activation token. One garrison on each. Well, it's a good thing we took out two level threes or they got a bunch more victory points. They get one victory point for not being able to place one there. Um, and we did the other part. So, cool. All right, got two actions left. Um, I should probably do some more questing. Oh, we also got... Oh, we can build... We can do all kinds of fun stuff. We got that card. 
Um, let's see what we're gonna do. Archery, pay a food to gain an orange die in archery. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if I want that though. Let's quest. So we get three red, a purple, and a blue. Uh, discard any items from the market. Gain one resource for every skull. Remove all activation tokens from something. Yeah, we kind of need to move them off that blood worm. Yeah, we're gonna go for that one, the Imperial Spy. All right, we got the th skulls and the shield. So I get to draw a new quest, get a victory point. Victory point, draw a new quest. Oh, it only removes it from a legion. So we'll remove it from the Imperial Guard so that he has to stay and face the Counter of Omens. Nice. Um, I'm going to command because I got to get my troops over here. That's about ready to happen. So we'll bring these two. And yeah, that's it. Leave those guys behind. And then back to call. Want a quest again? You may move one curse. Place one basic unit on each of your havens. That's not bad. Every other player places one basic unit on any of their havens. Or export empty hex. Hey, let's do that one. So he's gonna quest again. One, two, three, four, five skulls and two bolts. Got the skulls and the two bolts, so we got two successes. It's another victory point. Place a basic unit on each of your havens. So this is my only basic unit left. And then blue gets to place one on any one of on any of their havens. So we will place a young wing. His last action will be to command again, to bring these oath swarm up here, getting ready for the blood worm to come wreak some havoc. All right, and so we're done. Now we go to the nemesis phase, activating legion or hordes uh, for each activation token in initiative order, lowest to highest. So Imperial Guard has nothing because we removed it with that quest. So the next up would be the Counter of Omens. He does not move further away from the capital and he prefers to move towards enemies. So that would be equal, equal. So he's gonna come in here and havoc is happening in the capital. All right, the Counter of Omens gets four white dice in archery. Um. It has to fight the garrison first. We gotta kind of peel through the layers of the onion here. All right, so the garrison's going first and the Counter of Omens. Counter of Omens got zero hit and a shield. So Counter of Omens goes down one. Then we go on to Clash. Um, Clash, Counter of Omens gets purple blue, blue, orange. Garrison gets blue, blue, orange, orange, white. The counter got three hits and the garrison got four hits and a shield. So the garrison loses two because of the shield. Those go to Chaos's graveyard. Counter of Omens loses three, so he's all the way down to one. Now it's a blue and a white for the level one garrison, and counter is two blue. 
And all right, so we blank shield, and he got two hits, so the garrison is gone. Destroyed by the Chaos Horde. And now we would go initiative order. The Imperial Guard steps up. Now we do his archery round, which is blue and two white. Counter is getting two white. This is probably going to be the end of this one. Two hits and a shield and a hit. So the shield knocks out the counter's hit. Um, the Imperial Guard wins. So that goes to his graveyard and that is that. Next um, would be the Executioner. Now the Executioner is trying to get to that one back there, so he's going to go this way. Reinforcements and get to him. Yeah. <clears throat> Executioner activated. Counter of Omens is dead. Um, now the Blood Worm is coming to town. Oh gosh, this is going to be nasty. The Blood Worm gets three red in archery. I have um, a tower. And an archer. So I get two white and arch and archery. He blanked and I shielded. So nothing happened in archery. I'm fine with that. So he goes up to four red and a purple in clash. I have black, two red, two blue, and two white. He got three hits. I got one shield. Um, but I got one, two, three, four hits. So I'm hitting him four times, so he's gonna drop down to two. And he's got three hits coming my way. I have one shield, so I have to take two hits. I will let the youngling and the archer go. And these are going in Chaos's graveyard. So I just lost a youngling and an archer. So I'm rolling these. He is now rolling two red. Two more hits. Two more hits. Two more hits. Oh, I got the hits. One, two, three, four, five hits. So he's toast. But he got a bolt, which lets him place a curse on any hex without an X. I'll put that there. Um, and then he got two hits, but I had one shield, so I will lose an Oath Sworn. And that's it for the Blood Worm. He's gone. Oh, yeah, and I get four victory points for destroying the Blood Worm. Um, one, two, three, four. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Um, that's that. Then we go to production, gain resources based on your total number of havens. So we're, we're gonna just do it combined. So it's havens and the board. So I'm getting two salt from my havens, plus two salt from the board, plus another salt from the board. And that's my salt, so I got five salt. And for plunder, I get five, six, seven, eight. Three, six, eight. Then for food, I get one, two. I'm getting a lot of food, but that's okay. Um, let's see, what's next for Call to produce? He gets two salt from his haven. He gets one salt from that hex, and that's it, so he gets three salt. Then um, food wise, gets one or plunder one, two, four plunder. And food, he gets five, six, seven, eight. All right. Then we score for the Empire two garrisons, two points. 
Two legions, two points. Graveyard, two, four, six. So they go up to 18. Um, next, we are going to score for the Horde. One for every curse in play, one, two. Um, one for every Horde in play, which is zero. Two for the Graveyard, so two, four. So they're gonna go up to 12. Then we return units from the Graveyard. Those go over there. Gets his archers back. Dead eyes, I should say. Uh, Counter of Omens is gone. And I get that spear slinger back. Uh, then we do two for each haven. Two, four, six. So each of us gets six for that. So I'll go to 23 and have go to 22. We get one for each special haven in play. And you can always pay, spend five resources for one victory point. Um, but I think you've gotten a fill for the game here. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, comment in the uh, area below to let me know the mistakes that I made. Again, I know I did the Oath Sworn upgrade twice when I shouldn't have. I forgot to do terrain. I even forgot to do terrain just then when it was a forest and I could have re-rolled some of my dice that I may have been able to salvage some more troops. But we got the W. Um, I really love this game. Again, this is my seventh play. I got it right before Christmas, so that's almost a play a day. Um, I'm really impressed with Nemesis Games and the, the production quality, um, their responsiveness on social media to people that have questions and their support. It's just been amazing. Um, but this is maybe my top game of 2021. It, it is my top game in 2021. So I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Uh, again, comment below, let me know what I did wrong, what you enjoy about the game, what other content you might like to see. If you enjoy solo gameplays, let me know. Um, I've really been looking into doing Spirit Island or Mage Knight or some of the other games that I just love and don't get a chance to play too often, just do some solo gameplay of it. Um, hope you all uh, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe below, like, comment, and share with your friends. Have a great day. Bye.